Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm here at the old Fredericton burial grounds this morning. Hopefully you're seeing the, the sun rise just over my shoulder back there as we celebrate the dawn of a new day. You know, when the city of Fredericton was being founded, this plot of ground, this land around me, the plan was that it was going to be a park in the heart of the city. It was supposed to be a place where you could come for a picnic, where you could play some games together, where you could stroll, uh, take a short stroll, maybe sit on a bench and ad admire some of the gardens that were going to be here. But less than a year later, the plan changed as the city needed a burial ground. And so they began to use this as a graveyard. First burial was here in 1787 for Anthony Foster, an English officer in Her Majesty's Army. His gravestone still stands here. For almost 100 years, soldiers, judges, doctors, clergy, fathers, mothers, children uh, were buried here. The first lieutenant governor of New Brunswick is buried on these grounds. The first novelist to write a, a book published in Canada is buried here on these grounds. And they are all still here. Not one of them borrowed their plot of ground because they only needed it for a little while. Not so with Jesus. A little less than 2,000 years ago, a few women went to a place kind of like this. And they were going there to care for the body of their teacher and their friend. He had been cruelly and unjustly executed three days earlier. They were coming to his grave, a, a cave, a sepulcher, to do the acts of care that time had not permitted them to do on the day that he had died. But they got a huge surprise. Listen to the story from Luke chapter 24. It was very early in the morning on the first day of the week. The women took the spices they had prepared. They then went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from it. When they entered the tomb, they did not find the body of Jesus. They were wondering about this. Suddenly, two men in clothes as bright as lightning stood beside them. The women were terrified. They bowed down with their faces to the ground. Then the men said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you he would rise. It was while he was still with you in Galilee. He said, the Son of Man must be handed over to sinful people. He must be nailed to a cross. On the third day, he will rise again from the dead. Then the women remembered Jesus' words. Isn't that amazing? It's almost the opposite of the story of this place where I stand this morning. A place which people had planned to become a graveyard, a place of mourning, and came instead a park, a place of joy, as they celebrated the risen Lord. Join with the worship team now as they sing, Come, People of the Risen Lord.
celebration. O oh, resurrected Savior, today is a day of celebration. We celebrate your glorious rising from the grave. We celebrate your triumph over evil. We celebrate your victory over death. We celebrate your defeat of the devil. We celebrate the certainty of heaven. We celebrate the fulfillment of all your promises. We celebrate the confidence we have for the future. We celebrate the love which our Father has shown to us so dramatically. We celebrate the richness of our life with you. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Amen. Just before Christmas last year, we had some great news in our family. Our youngest daughter was engaged to a, to a great guy. We love him. Uh, he had... It was great news for us, but it was not a surprise for us. He had come to us earlier in the fall, and he had asked if we would be okay with it. And he shared with us some of the plan. Of course, we were okay with it. As I said, he's a great guy. We have no doubt about his love for our daughter. And so we celebrated and we rejoiced together. It was great news, but it was not a surprise. One of the things I really love about the Easter story is the way people are surprised by the great news. None of them saw it coming. Jesus' followers are shocked. They can't believe it. No one expected it. After the horror of Jesus' death, this was the last thing that anyone would have imagined. And yet, the, the way the Bible tells the story, you have to wonder, why are they surprised? I love the words the angels say to the women. Why are you, what, what are you doing here? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. Why, why did you come to a graveyard to look for Jesus? He's not here. He's alive. Then the angel reminds them about the plan. Remember what Jesus said, he, he told them. He said he was going to be arrested. He said he was going to be crucified. He said he was going to rise again on the third day. And then they remembered Jesus' words. Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection were all part of God's plan. It wasn't a surprise to God. Didn't even need to be a surprise to Jesus' followers because he had told them about it. And that's a great encouragement to me. God had a plan. And God's plan, God's timing, cannot be thwarted. No matter how much people try, no matter how many hiccups Satan might throw our way, God's plan will be accomplished. God will accomplish his purpose for his glory and for his people. Even through some of the most difficult circumstances, maybe especially because of some of the most difficult circumstances, God will accomplish His purpose for us and nothing can stop it. The other thing I love about the Easter story 
is that it is the women who are there first to get the good news. The Gospels all agree that the women are the first to receive the announcement that Jesus is alive. Not the male disciples who ran away from the cross. Uh, not the, the ones who didn't stick with him through it all. But the women who stood by him even when they are devastated by the circumstances, even when they don't understand what God's plan is, they stood with Jesus. Even when they thought God's plan went wrong, there they are at the tomb on this first day of the week to show their love and to express their commitment to Jesus by doing what they needed to do for him. Trusting that God is good, trusting that God is faithful. And I hope that's me, and I hope that's us, that we are faithful in our walk with God even when the plan doesn't seem to go our way. Trusting in God and His plan for our lives and for our church. Waiting to be surprised by the good news. Today is a good day to believe. One of the oldest statements of faith in the church is something called the Apostles' Creed. It's a statement of trust and belief in God's plan, especially through Jesus, through His birth, His death, and His resurrection. So, won't you join with me as we say the Apostles' Creed together and declare our trust in God's plan. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Join with me in prayer. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for in this Easter morning. In the chill of this morning air, we feel the warmth and the blessings of your Spirit. We rejoice this day because you are faithful. We rejoice this morning because you keep your promises. We are truly amazed that the cross and the crucifixion can be transformed into a symbol of new life and a symbol of eternal life. We are thankful that you come to greet us with hope and joy and trust and faith in a place that we thought would be anything but those things. We thank you that a dark and empty tomb has become a place of light and life. In all our days, we shall serve and live for Christ, the resurrected, the risen Savior. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything. Now I can't know him as my king. 
Thank you for joining us this morning uh, to celebrate the empty tomb, the risen Christ. I'm going to go off now and get a celebratory hot coffee and maybe a good muffin as well to uh, mark the occasion. Uh, if you're watching us early Easter morning, join us uh, in person at Grace Memorial at 1030 this morning for Easter service. You can also join us uh, live stream online if you can't get uh, to the building this morning. Uh, if you're watching us a little bit later, you can go to our YouTube channel, Grace Memorial, and, uh, and watch us there and see the service and celebrate the risen Christ. Let me send us off with this blessing. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. As you journey in faith, may your life be full. May your love be abundant. May your hope be eternal. Live this day and always for Christ Jesus, because the risen Christ lives in you. Alleluia. Amen.